welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel and we're at Metro East Community Media in Gresham. And now I'm going to be talking with the Micro Enterprise Services of Oregon and here to represent MISO is Carmen Madrid who is a Business Development Specialist. Thanks for being here, Carmen. Hi, Monica. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, we're my just pleasure. really excited to be here. Well, good. Now tell me a little bit about MISO, first of all. You're going to be part of the Rockwood Rising Project, mm -hmm. but it's Micro Enterprise Services of Oregon, tell me what you do. So MISO has been a nonprofit organization for over tw uh, 10 years okay. and we started out in the Northeast Martin Luther King area and now we are actually expanding out in Gresham. I mean we're also in St. John's and in Beaverton and okay. really our mission is to help the underserved community uh, businesses through economic development, uh, through you know entrepreneurship, empowerment and education and okay. we have just a lot of wraparound services to really help uh, the entrepreneur. So anybody that comes into MISO can just walk in. There's no appointment needed. Really? Right. They just show they up. They just and show up, and you'll they, welcome them. And, yeah. Uh, and some of them are, you know, I have this business idea, and I really want to do it. And you could tell the fire is in their eye, and so we give them, you know, really the basic services uh, to move forward in that direction. So whether it's just registering their business, or you know, what's the name of your business? Have you thought about that? And wow. So we do that and then we also work with businesses that have been working five years uh, in their small business and they really want to scale it up to the next level. So, so, you're, uh, so you're just a great resource for all sorts of things. So anybody that is thinking about starting a business, starting a business, has had a business for a while, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just small businesses, is that right? Right. So right. are there any other um, parameters or any other qualifications to be served by mm -hmm. you, your organization? Right. I mean, it is there is an income qualification around it, but okay. anybody walks in and you know we do help them and guide them to resources either available in the community or they have access to resources within MISO. And that's where I feel that MISO is very unique because we have um, loan, loan uh, products that are available to us. We do credit building for folks that are just really having a hard time getting lending in wow. ba traditional banking. Uh -huh. um, we help them through that. Um, we have a market link program to help them understand the market research within their business. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one service. I mean, I could, I, I could, yeah, this you could, could go on and on, I can tell. No, yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds like that you probably have things that people had not even thought about. Exactly. Right? Because when people start a business, a lot of times they, they, you know, I want to open a restaurant because I have grandma's recipes and they are, everybody loves them. Exactly. But there's a whole lot more to starting a business than having right. good recipes. You know? Right, there's, right. And, and I think a lot of times people don't think about those things. Mm -hmm. So tell, tell me about somebody that you've helped. Give me an example of some somebody who started a business or that you've worked with who you think has been helped by me so okay I, I mean the stories are endless <laughs> but you know we've worked with people that have come into our doors the very first time where they're homeless mm. and they have an idea and it's it's almost you know how do you set the stage for that and not kill a dream yeah and because well especially if you're homeless you have a lot more obstacles to overcome than a lot of other people mm -hmm. right I mean, I mean that's just an example but you know we have a client now who's opening his second restaurant and that's where he originally started and so you know he started, he started as a homeless person mm -hmm. wow and giving sort of the the natural steps you know to to gain momentum in their business mm -hmm. and then give them a lot of empowerment and you know break down all those barriers that right. come especially with you know traditionally communities of color and minorities uh -huh. that either don't have um, the system navigation or the understanding of what to do next and once you give them those tools it's like you know this is for a lot of um, immigrants and refugees you know people have been doing this in their homes you know growing right, growing right. up I would my mom would have a party and she would call like five different people who knew how to cook five different things and you know what I'm saying yeah. and so why can't that be economic empowerment sure. and a take small business you know, take, that can take grow your skills that you have right. and work with them and, and um, yeah empower them to, to have their own business I bet you do a lot of hand holding at first when people are just starting out, don't you? I mean, like you know, helping build up their self esteem or, or mm -hmm. their you know, yes, you can do this. Yeah, there you know, there can be a lot of that. I mean, I think it's it's more of like understanding where that person is mm -hmm. and really giving them the tools. And once you empower someone with tools that they weren't aware of, they're able to you know think outside of that. I mean, I'll give you an example. You know, there was a barrier with one of the food cart businesses that I'm working with, and she didn't understand the city guidelines or the code and things like that. They can be very confusing. Exactly. 
And so, I mean, I, I'm confused reading it. <laughs> and so, you know, you look at that and you give them, you know, some creative ways of navigating that issue. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, this is doable. I didn't know that I could do X, Y, and Z. And if somebody had told me that in a way that I understood it or, you know, made sense with my cash flow, you right, know, right. because it's expensive to make those yeah. kinds of decisions. And you don't want to make a mistake right. that's going to cost you money. Exactly. Hard earned money. Exactly. So, so when um, the the services that you provide, is this something that's costly to people? Is are the services um most of the services? So if you walk in the door, mm -hmm. the services are free. I mean, you know, we are a nonprofit organization, and you know there are loan fees eventually depending right, right. on the size but of the your loan and things like that. Are right. Free. Um, and for example, we have a business building workshop that's going to be two weekends in the Rockwood Library. So oh. we keep things local, so for accessibility. Yeah. It's going to be from 10 to 3, March 24th and March 31st. And traditionally, it's $150, but you know we have a um, sliding scale system where if they qualify for it, they would only have to pay like $25. So, so you're making things affordable. Mm -hmm. You have business de the business development services. Um, that's Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 to 6 right? right now I think we've been able to um, most recently uh, acquire more funding so that oh, we good. can be there Monday through Thursday but <sighs> we started in uh, June of 2017 and in that short period of time we've already serviced over 66 businesses Wow and they continue to come back and that is you know that's when you know that you're successful in helping people feel comfortable and move them along because they want more Right. You know, they want more and they they feel like they can have this safe space where they can grow their business. They trust you. They right. trust you. And, and they, they benefited from your work. So that's, that's huge. So you're in the same, you're in that building D that we mm -hmm. talked about earlier, mm -hmm. um, right down the, right down the way from, uh, from Metro East and um, mm -hmm. from POIC who we'll hear from later. Uh, so what you're doing is, is, from what I understand, is, is um, helping businesses get going, helping them thrive and, and grow and mm -hmm. just providing them the resources or helping them find the resources they right. need to, to do that. And we're really excited about this uh, Rockwood Rising project mm -hmm. and part of the reason why is because it is a very diverse community. It is. And one thing about MISO is that we are the people that we represent, that we serve. <sighs> And what we're doing right now is because there's going to be a lot of like featured, you know, kitchens and mm -hmm. things like that in Rockwood Rising, we really want those to be local businesses that right. become successful in that model and okay. really getting them involved. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Now, are these some of the people that you have worked? Well, yeah, that's so Josh, that's, that's, that's Josh them, and right. Emily. I mean, they work for the and, city, but they were part of our that's open that's house. Yeah, 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 that's a, yeah. Um, a community member. I, and I, and this was our open house. And this is what I mean about collaborating with the city and, um, you know, collaborating with the developer so that it's, it's a very inclusive uh, place to be. Good, um, good. That, that woman right there, she just launched her business on the left, uh, Machinda Lee, and she's with the Barrel B, so she has like this honey that oh, she makes that she puts it honey. in. Yeah, yeah, nice. local honey, so she's doing that. She just launched last year. And you could see just, you know, community members, very diverse um, folks mm -hmm. that are enjoying each other's food that they were cooking for one another. This is uh, <laughs> Body By Me, and she oh, is a local health fitness instructor. Nice. And I told her, I said, yeah, you mobilize the community and start doing some workout yeah. sessions here because that's the other thing that this whole project is trying to promote is that healthy lifestyle. Right, right. This is great. Mm -hmm. We're just about out of time. So tell me about a uh, business building workshop you have coming up in March. Right. That's the one March 24th, 24th and 31st. At the library. Mm -hmm. so at the library. That, um, and that's uh, your, your location right now, though, where people can walk in. It's right on the Max Line. I don't know, we mm -hmm. haven't talked about that very much, but it is mm -hmm. right on the Max Line, so easy to get to. Yes. Right across the street from where it was the Plaza del Sol. Right. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're really excited to have you in that building to be part of this whole project. And, Thank you. And you're doing a terrific job. Any last words you have for us about uh, MISO that we should know? Um, just that, you know, we're here to support the community and the business community, and we want to see generational wealth in the community. I love it. Thank so. you so much. Thanks okay. a lot, Carmen. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay. And thanks for watching Community Hot Line. We have one more interview coming up uh, about Rockwood Rising, so please don't go away. We'll be right here. We'll see you in a minute.
Hotline is made possible with generous support by Gresham Ford, the dealer with a heart. The Contribute to the Community program provides the opportunity for the Gresham Ford team to make a positive impact, serving their customers and helping people across the community. The Outlook, serving the residents of East Multnomah County for more than 100 years. The region's number one source for information, The Outlook provides readers with intensely local coverage of the issues and people that impact our lives and community. The Mountain Hood Cable Regulatory Commission, advocating on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. And by Stamp Connection. Metro East values the support of our partners in the community, and we'd like to give a very special thanks to the sponsors who help make our programming possible. On Community Hotline, we highlight the great work of local nonprofits in our area. And now you can also see us on our live Facebook feed, 7 p.m. every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. So tune in and find out what's going on in your community. What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard.